So uh, my name is Dave Meacham. I'm the Head of Inspection and Assessment at uh, Fenter and the GGS. Uh, normally I would have a colleague, Lee Galley, uh, the Assessment Manager. Uh, assessment manager. Uh, normally I'd have him with me uh, carrying out uh, some work in the chat. Uh, unfortunately he's not available today so I'll be doing it myself. Um, so please sit bear with me. Um, any questions you've got, send via either the Q&A or, or chat. We will try and answer them at the end. Uh, this is going to take about 25 to 30 minutes, I think, to go through this, uh, this, this webinar. I've got a large selection of FAQs that probably will clear up any queries that you have. Um, so we'll go through those shortly. Um, I can't answer any specific cases on this forum. Um, so if you have any specific issues, please email them to the technical and they will uh, and they will get back to you. If there's anything I can't answer, I will try and find out an answer for you uh, and get in contact. Uh, or we'll publish it on our website. A little bit about us. Uh, RISA are the inspection body for, for FENSA. Uh, we have eight full-time inspectors, eight part-time inspectors, three full-time um, administrators and two part-time administrators. I still out, I go out uh, and inspect myself. Um, I come from the industry, as do all of my staff. We've got about 500 years in between us. Uh, so we, we know a little bit about windows. Not everything, but we know a little bit. So the reason you're here is that uh, in, on December the 15th, the government uh, published the following documents, approved document F, approved document L, approved document O. Uh, these are all coming into force shortly, 15th of uh, June this year. Um, this presentation isn't covering F or O. We have another one for approved document F um, and approved document O is new build, uh, so we don't look at that. We're also not looking at the new build aspects of approved document L today. So I just want to get through some myths. Anybody that came to the uh, ADF will recognise this. It's the same kind of thing. We, we get this over and over, so we thought it's, it's best to go through it again. Uh, one of the things we hear are fencer employing a thousand extra staff to carry our inspections, and I always say my wish. Um, yeah, I've got eight full time, eight part time, and that's covering England and Wales. We have six thousand companies we have to uh, look after, uh, and between them, they cover uh, complete around about five hundred installations per year. I've had the same number of inspectors, give or take one or two, for loads of years now. It's, it doesn't really change that much. Uh, we've, we've kind of got it down to a T. Another one is Fenter are carrying out 50% more inspections to enforce this. We're really not. It's the same as it's always been. We work on a quota basis based on the number of installations you did the previous year. Uh, that's not changing anytime soon. There is a risk element uh, in it as well, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, we're not going around putting more inspections in to, to deal with these regulation changes. It is just a change. We've always been inspecting to approve document L and approve document S. Since we're introducing these regulations to make more money, um, we're not introducing them. These are regulations, uh, building regulations. They are uh, government regulations. They, they go through parliament. Um, so yeah, uh, we're not here to make money. Um, we allow installers to self certify work so you don't have to go through building control every single time. Okay, so uh, just go through uh, ADL, uh, the new ADL. So assisting thermal performance when installing replacement windows and doors. Okay, so for new and replacement windows and doors, sites, all the following apply. For starters, the performance should be no worse than the previous windows or doors. That sounds a bit daft, uh, but let me explain why. So um, there was a case where um, when previously, you could put new value windows in uh, in replacement that were actually worse than the ones that had been put into new build. So if you change the windows in a new build um, that were a high, of a higher spec, you only had to bring them up to the replacement spec. Um, so you could in fact make them worse. That's been taken away now. So if you go into a, a property that's got high specification windows, uh, you, you, you need to get them at least as good as that or as good as the building regulations, you can't drop below now. All units should be draft proofed, which in our industry, uh, very few items that aren't. Uh, units should meet the minimum uh, standards given in table 4.2. If you look to the left, we've summarized them there. And insulated cavity closures should be installed where appropriate. Okay, so if you're taking windows out and there's no cavity closer in there, you should install a uh, an insulated cavity closer. We're not talking about five stops here. This is for masonry, masonry. If you do get involved in 
timber framed buildings, uh, you then you, you will need to make sure that the fire stopping capability is still there. That's something different from the approved document B. I'm not going to go into that today. Uh, we're looking at a approved document L. So windows uh, either have to have a U value of maximum U value of 1.4 or an energy rating of B. That is the new regulation. Previously it was 1.6 in C, now it's 1.1 in B. Doors with a glazed area of uh, less than 60% uh, should have uh, a U value of 1.4 or a door set energy rating of C. Um, other doors need to have a U value of 1.4 or a door set energy rating of B. Okay. Assisting thermal performance, uh, timber windows and doors are slightly different. They have been given uh, what's called derogations uh, to, it, it's, a, it's a year uh, lead in time. Uh, there's no transition period for other materials, but timber has a, a period where it can get, uh, it needs to get be able to get to the new values um, required. So timber windows, and doors, a maximum UV value 1.6 is still acceptable, um, and an energy rating of band C. For doors, 1.8, and a band E, a door set energy rating of band C is acceptable. Okay, when we talk about windows and doors, uh, we need to clarify this as well. So, windows is fairly simple timber frames, casements, yeah, molded timber, modified timbers, laminate timber, finger jointed, a coir, all those, they're, they're all included. The interesting one is door sets where leaves are primarily solid timber slabs formed of laminated timber in single or multiple layers. We're talking composite doors there. We're talking composite doors that have a solid timber uh, core, okay? And it doesn't matter what frame material is used. Uh, you can use PVC or, or whatever else, or the slab facing, doesn't matter what material that is. It's the timber core that's relevant here. So if you have a timber cored, um, composite door then the uh you have a year to get down to 1.4 or the uh, uh equivalent or the appropriate energy rating also energy rating okay um so yeah that, that is the that's, that's quite an interesting one that people should uh could understand it's it's composite doors with a comp with a solid slab Okay, so how do you prove your compliance? This is the tricky bit. Uh, install this, uh, a window that has a verified window energy rating. Okay, so it needs to be manufactured by someone who has a license, either by BFRC or TRR, um, and it needs to be marked with that rating and license number. Okay, so if you're having an energy rating, uh, window energy rating, um, it's got to come through a fabricator that has got a license to manufacture that. That means it can be ordered all the way back up the chain. So they are making the window that has been simulated for that. Or you can install a window that has a verifiable U value calculation provided. Okay, so uh, when we say that, we mean that the, it's usually the system supplier will provide documentation to the fabricator that says if you make a window out of these component parts, this frame, this trans, and this sash, uh, reinforcing, and you fit this IGU, so you fit, for example, a soft coat, warm edge, argon unit, then uh, it will meet the whole value of the whole U value, uh, the whole window U value. This point I want to stress that we're looking for whole window U value or whole door U value, not a center plane U value. There is a difference. The difference is whole window encompasses everything, the frame material, uh, the um, spacer bar, uh, the sealant, uh, gasket, reinforcing, everything is included in the calculation. A center plane U value is just the measure from one side of the glass through the airspace and any gas fill and out the other side of the glass. It doesn't in take into consideration any framing material, doesn't even take into consideration the, uh, the space of bar. So when you talk uh, center plane U values, typically on a soft coat argon unit, you're looking at 1.2. Um, so the, that's the center plane for the glass unit. That's it, they are very different. If, if we're given a center plane U value as proof of compliance at say 1.4, yeah, when you put your frame in there, you yeah, might find it goes uh, uh, a lot higher. So we're looking for a whole window U value. Doors is very similar. Uh, get a door set energy rating that you can mark 
uh, onto the uh, that's marked onto the door um, uh, or get a, a U value calculation. It's, it's basically the same principle. We are just trying to make sure that the the, the item that has been installed uh, meets the requirements. Um, so if we turned up on site and we couldn't verify what it is, um, when we ask you to, to provide that paperwork, then we'd expect to see if it, under the case of U value calculation, uh, the calculation and proof of the unit that you've used. Okay, so if the U value calculation from the system supplier says you need to use a, a unit with a 1.2 cent pain value, we will expect to see proof that that's the unit that you've used uh, and marry the two together. Okay, so proving you have a genuine rated product. Uh, so if you have a full BFRC or TRR rated product, it's gonna have to be permanently marked. Um, this is an issue we've had in the past that we have some rated products out there, but they're not marked. So we have to go down an audit trail. Um, but the, the BFRC rules are that they should be marked. They should have the company registration number on it. Uh, it should have the license number of the window or door, and it should have the actual rating on it, saying what it is. It'll be a little mark, a little sticker. Um, it's not the rainbow mark that you get on energy rating products like tires and tellies and bridges and freezers. We have a version of that, and that usually gets stuck on the glass or it's used for marketing purposes. The permanent mark is a little label that's going to sit inside uh, the rebate somewhere. So the window is can be identified at any point. So it's got to be indelible and you got a small sticker. Um, the uh, permanent mark is for us, basically. Um, the problem with them is that we sometimes find that customers will remove them or they're exactly in the spot where you want to fix. Some fabricators love to put them 150 from the corners um, and that's where you're going to put your fix in place. Um, so yeah, there, there, there have been issues, but they need to be marked. So yeah please ensure that these, these units are marked. It'll make it so much smoother when it comes through to, to assessment. Okay. Uh, is there a transition period? So I'm gonna go through some FAQs now. Um, is there a transition period? Unfortunately not, only for timber. Uh, so uh, the Department for Leveling Up House and Queens just made it very clear there is no transition period. Um, so if anything fitted from the 15th of June onwards needs to meet these requirements. Okay. Uh, do I have to calculate the U value for every single window or door? No, you, you, you can do it. There, there, you, that's in the regs. You can do it if you want that way. Um, but the best way to do it is to calculate it on a standard size window, which is an unusual window, 12 30 wide, 1480 high. Um, and when you're Dealing with a casement window, it's a central vertical divider with wide opening light and one fixed light. Um, when it's a vertical slider, it's a central horizontal divider with one opening light and one fixed light. So that, that, those are standard windows. It, they, they basically average them out. So we'd expect to see a calculation. That's what the system supplies work on uh, for, for the calculations. When you're working, dealing with a door, it's a door that's 1230 wide and 2180 high. There are some issues with that at the moment, then, and there are some changes being made uh, that have been suggested by the GGF. The reason behind it is that that is okay for a single door, maybe a set of French doors, but when you get into multi-pane units, um, then the amount of profile that is uh, used, so frame sash, 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 frame, um, over a certain distance is going to be wider than 12.30, so you can't actually do the, do the calculation. Uh, there is some wording that's going to be put into the document or amendment that's going to be uh, that's going to be agreed that we will put out shortly. Uh, I think it might be on the GGF website already, but it allows you to be able to make, make a calculation on, on wider multi-pane doors. How do I prove I have an energy rating? So if you have a genuine fully glazed Energy, window energy rating, then your supplier should either permanently mark the product or supply you with the labels to mark after installation. Okay. Um, for it to be a window energy rated product, it needs to come out of the factory fully glazed. Okay. It's the whole product you're buying, not a frame. If they're just giving you frames, there is a way we can, we can you can get into an energy rating. Um, but I'll move on to that in a second. Um, but if you are buying a window energy rated product, it is a fully glazed product and it'll either be labeled or they'll give you the labels. 
if they're not giving you the labels, ask for them because that you need them to, to prove that is a, a compliant documentation, a compliant uh, installation. You really don't want us asking you to to prove it afterwards because we will need to get the license numbers and it's just a lot more awkward and documentation. It's it's, it's a, a real pain. So uh, get these these products marked up. Where should the label be positioned? It, where it can be seen during inspection. So in the rebate of the frame or on the edge of the sash, two popular spots. Uh, don't really want to stick it at the at the bottom because any drainage, any water in the drainage uh, may affect it. You, as I said before, you don't really want to put it where you might put a fix in, so a little bit further up. Um, some people are putting them on the back edge of a side hung uh, of the actual sash. So when you open it up, you can see it there. Um, it, it's not in your face. It's not uh, somewhere that um, people are going to get upset with it and, and pick it off. Um, it, it, and it, and it's, it's clearly visible. It's not going to affect it by fixing it. So that's quite a good spot for it. But yeah, it just needs to be visible. Fixed windows, you can't do it. We're not going to be able to see them. Uh, if we inspect one window that is fixed in a house, which is rare because we try not to look at one window, just we want to get a bigger sample. Um, but if that's the case, then we'll, we'll, we'll ask you how it complies. Um, another question we've had is I've heard that regulations are more difficult for aluminium products to achieve. Uh, can I still use them? Of course you can. Aluminium products, uh, although they're a metallic product, so they, they have some limitations or they some difficulties with, with thermal performance. They, they, they rise to the challenge there. Obviously, the thermal breaks and, and that kind of issue. I've talked to a lot of aluminium suppliers, uh, system suppliers, and they are they're, they're confident that their products are going to meet either the U value or the WER. So WER is a trade-off between U value and G value. G value is is, uh, is light and heat from the sun coming through and aluminium has an advantage because it's much thinner. Um, so you get more G value with aluminium. So they're, they're, it has trade-offs and yep, they're compliant. What you want to do is wherever you buy your, your alley products from, make sure they give you the documentation that can prove uh, that it, it complies. Um, so yeah, but just make sure that they, they give you that documentation. They tell you if you're going to buy the units yourself, exactly what unit you need to buy. Okay. Does this apply to fire doors? You still need to get a, a U value, but the actual the maximum U value for a fire door, an external fire door, is 1.8. Um, so uh, yeah, there's a, there's a trade off there. They still need to be thermally, they perform thermally, but uh, yeah, there's, it's obviously uh, they're more difficult to. Uh, to get down to the 1.4s because of the nature of what they are. I purchased my windows and doors, uh, door frames separately from my glass unit. How do I comply? Okay, so this is unusual. When I, in my fitting days, we did exactly this. We got our frames in one place, got our glass from another, put them together. What this does is it makes you the manufacturer. You're putting two items together. We are an unusual industry in doing this. Not a lot of people buy two component parts, put them together on site and make a product. Um, but there are a couple of choices. One is you can ask the fabricator if they have a BFRC license. If they do, you can apply for free words if you're a FENTA member. Um, and uh, you can use their frames and the glass units specified by the fabricator. So they will have a list of glass units that you uh, you have to use. So it will be the, the low E coating, the gas fill that's required, the space above that's required, and the sealant, uh, edge sealant. And you will source that from your glass supplier and go, okay, I need this uh, to uh, to meet the requirements. And then you drop the, the two together, uh, you register with Fenster for it, and you then put your own label on with your name. So it's uh, it's, it's an easy way, and that's free from Fenster to do that. All we do is cascade the licenses down. If you're working via U-Value, then you ask the fabricator to do basically something very similar. You want them to provide you with the U-value calculation for the product, okay? And it will specify in there what type of IGU you need to purchase, okay? So uh, the system supplier, a lot of them are having certificates of conformity and we're looking through them and you know, majority of them are fine so far. And it'll go down there and it'll tell you if you use this system um, and it's reinforced, you'll need to use that unit. If it's this system and unreinforced, then you can use that unit. A lot of them are just going to send a pain new values and saying that frame, with that sash and that reinforcement needs a U value, uh, set up a U value unit of this. And that's, if you go to your glass manufacturer, they'll be able to provide that for you. Uh, it's fairly simple. Okay. Mm. 
with the free words, the way to do it is just contact inquiries at bfrc.org and they will issue you an application form. All BFRC need to know is the name of the BFRC frame manufacturer you purchased from, so the name of that, that company, your contact details, obviously, uh, the license from the frame manufacturer that you wish to be cascaded down to you. So they, some of them only have one or two, others have loads. Um, so talk to the frame manufacturer and see which windows that you use and just ask them to uh, give you the license numbers for the one they want to cascade down. There are thousands out there because obviously every system has uh, loads of these and there's lots of different configurations. I mean, you think of the number of different types of glass there is out there that you can fit into each frame and then components parts and then get into the alley world where there's even more components. There are just uh, thousands and thousands of calculations. So just, just talk to your fabricator and they'll tell you the license you want to use and then pass on to the FRC and go from there. It's a fairly simple process. Uh, okay, we're getting to the end now. I'll, I'll move to the chat and Q and A in a second. Um, a couple of things here. So, uh, do I need to maintain the character? I, I need to maintain the character of the building. What can I do? Uh, so, if you're talking, you know, uh, listed building, you know, things like that, conservation areas, um, uh, where you need to consider the character of the building, you need to match it exactly then you can fit windows and doors with a center pane new value. It's the end time the center pane new value uh, comes in for compliance. Okay, center pane new value of 1.2. And as I say, a center pane new value of 1.2 is usually soft coat, uh, warm edge. I've, actually, you don't need to worry about the warm edge, but it's soft coat and a, um, uh, uh, an air gap of 16 to 20 mil with argon. That's an argon. That usually gets your 1.2 soft coat glass and argon gas. You can go narrow if you use Krypton, uh, and, and you can get into other types of low E glass and, and muck around with it. If the, the all the major glass manufacturers have calculators that are free to use, uh, so Pilkington, St. Bay, and Guardian, they, they all have them that you can go online um, and you can muck around with the unit yourself. So you can put in what coating you want to do and uh, the, the airspace, uh, what type of gas you're going to put in it. and what configurations triple, double, and you can work out some of the new values from that. They're really, really great bits of kit um, that you can you can muck around with if you're a bit boring like me. Um, so yeah, go and play around with that. Uh, however, we don't accept them as compliance for pretty much anything other than this uh, character of the building. And we will still want to see that that is the actual unit you installed. So I don't want to see a, 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 a Calumen calculation that says 1.2 with a particularly narrow unit and Krypton and whatever else. And we turn up on site and it's a 16 mil uh, air field. <laughs> we we want to make sure that, it, uh, that they marry up. Do I need to fit a cavity closer? So any open cavity closer should be insulated with a cavity closer if possible. I know there are lots of occasions when it isn't possible, um, but cavities should be closed. Um, with an insulated cavity, cavity closer. Uh, there are obviously issues with cavity closers. We don't want, uh, if you just stuff material in there, you end up with a bridge. So it's got to be, uh, I have a DP, a vocal DPC in there, some type to stop any water tracking across. Um, uh, but yeah, any open cavity should be closed with an insulated cavity, but it's a case of if it's possible. And finally, if you've come here from Scotland and Wales to listen, uh, so, uh, uh, Scotland um, to listen to this, uh, or Wales, then I'm sorry, you've, you've kind of wasted your time a little bit. These are only applicable to England. Scotland, completely different set of system, um, and Centre doesn't operate in Scotland and Wales, uh, have their own building regulations, um, and they will be changing soon. I think most of them are up for consultation, LNF, um, and they, they, they differ slightly. So uh, when those come about, we'll make everybody aware. If you work on the border, I'm really sorry. You'll have two sets of building regs to apply to. Uh, and my inspectors have two to set the building regs that they have to, have to check for. So it's it's quite complex. Okay, I think that's my last thing. So I'm going to go to the chat and the Q and A now, um, and I will try and answer. So I'm going to start with the chat. Uh, Okay, so uh, will you be able to send us uh, the presentation afterwards for an uh, office copy? Please? We normally put one of these up on uh, online so you can see it. Uh, the, the Doc F one, I believe, is up online. Um, 
so uh, yeah, that it might not be this one. I, we normally do a couple of these, and we use we pick the second or third when we've, we've honed them slightly. But a version of this will be will be on the on the website shortly. Um, I clarify changing state of some of the windows. Clients not required. But I I went through this on the the if you on the the last BOCF presentation. The, there is this thirty percent rule that doesn't really exist. Um, if any work has taken place in that house since it was built, any energy efficient measure, including previous window changes, then you cut the thirty percent rule doesn't work. Um, it's it's not going to be applicable, I think, for ninety five percent of the uh, of the installations that go on. Probably more than that. If you go over to the Defensive website and watch the webinar on approved document F, I explain in much better detail with charts and tables. So go and have a look at that. Uh, Okay, I think you may have accidentally skipped past one slide. Can you check, please? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I think I went forward and then back. Um, let me have a look. Fire doors, energy reds, and label positioned. I did that one. Transition period. Did that one. Uh, ah, yeah, you're right. Actually, sorry, I missed this one. You're entirely correct. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, this one won't be being recorded and put out. Uh, so, uh, can I still use the default method? Right, no, absolutely not. The default method is now going to be dead from the 15th. For those that don't know, I'll explain what the default method is. Um, the default method is, was uh, developed for PVC and timber. It was soft oak glass, warm edge, spacer bar, 90% argon in PVC or timber. Okay, and if you put all that together, we just knew that it was going to comply because that, there was a, a level of uh, redundancy built into it that actually most all windows have got way below uh, 1.6 with that. With the units dropping, the, the, the new value dropping to 1.4, we don't have that confidence anymore. So the, the default has been removed. Okay, so if you just order up that unit and marry it with plastic, it's not going to be good enough anymore. We need to see that it actually does comply. Now moves me on to the next one, which is our A rated units. Okay, don't exist. A rated units have never existed. I see it on paperwork all over the place. There is no such thing as an A rated unit. A rated is the whole product, a window or door. Uh, if you uh, any rated product is the whole window or door. Uh, so I see a lot of people go, oh, I've ordered A rated units. You haven't. You've ordered a unit that, if it was installed in some windows, would achieve probably an A rate. It doesn't actually exist. Uh, this is a flow to aluminium windows, yeah. Um, so I, I kind of answered that with another one. Uh, regulations are applicable to all frame materials. Uh, but yeah, Timber's got 12 months longer before native requirements and comes on force on the 15th of June, which I've already, already been through. So uh, let's go back to the chat. Um, thank you very much for whoever put that. It was David. Uh, uh, I read somewhere about having to use a specific enhanced sealant. Is this correct? Not to my knowledge. I, I have no idea about any kind of sealant. We're looking at the window and door product. How they edge seal in is is something different. Uh, a question of suppliers conflicting information regarding trickle vents. One says we can put trickle vents in the sashes and frames. Another says that only the sashes, uh, only as the sashes won't conform to the ventilation required. Uh, <laughs> I'm answering more questions than trickle vents. Uh, again, go back to the, if you go to the, watch the webinar on, on trigger events that we've got online, we'll answer that for you. Um, we are not specifying where they need to go. Uh, there is a word in the document that says you put in what is feasible. We are not going to make everybody stop putting in the heads of windows. Um, they can go into sashes, that's absolutely fine. Put them where you've always put them. If you can only fit, uh, you, say you require 8,000 mil because it's a habit room, but you can only fit 4,000 because you're winning this. We're going to, that's acceptable for us. We're not going to ask you to start when head packers on the boxes or other bits and pieces to change the design of the window. It can change the strength of the window, uh, you know, by, by putting them in the head unnecessarily. It's, you get problems with plaster lines, you get problems with uh, vents being stuck behind blinds and curtains, so they become completely ineffective. Um, so we are not about uh, making people put them in, uh, put them into heads. We're just, you get whatever you can get in, as much as you can get in up to the regs. Ideally, the full amount, 8,000 habitable rooms and kitchens, 4,000 bathrooms um, and toilets. Um, but yeah, it's uh, if, if you can't do that, if you've got a 1,200 wide window in a bedroom, lots of those about with one side on, get as much as you can in that side on. Uh, if enlarging or opening or creating an aperture is to install a bifotos for all no sap count, that's outside the scope of the center. You would need to go through building control. 
um, and it will be uh, be yeah. Um, you have to go through them, and they will, will guide you. <laughs> Sorry, I missed what you said about the above question. Do we have to use an enhanced sealant? Um, there is. Well, if we're talking sealant around the frame, uh, then no, there's no enhanced sealant around the frame that you require. If it's if your IGU manufacturer needs to require an enhanced sealant, or your fabricator has said the unit that you use needs an uh, enhanced edge sealant for the, the unit, that's up to their product. But it's it's not anything that's been specified by the building makes. You just need to hit a U value of one point four for windows and doors. Okay, um, we use solid composite doors and these have an extension until 4th of June 2023. Yes. So if you're using a solid timber core composite door, they have an extension until the 14th of June 2023. Okay. Phone core do not. Different product. It's the timber that's the issue, nothing else. Uh, just the uh, just uh, just sort of the PVC around it, the slab cut, uh, facing. Okay, uh, which type of label required? Okay, so um, we're talking about the permanent label on the window energy rating. It will be a little label, about this sort of size, um, and it'll have three pieces of information the license, the, the manufacturer, and the uh, number. Uh, the, sorry, the rating. Uh, being a fabricator, a lot of system has still going through the motion of joining BFRC one to ensure a certain house. What do we do? Um, It'll be U value until that point. Um, yeah, there, 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 there is a bit of a backlog, but until, until that point, we will be assessing. We we'll have to ask for the U values um, and go from that point onwards. That's the only, the only option available. Uh, solid composite with a glazed side panel. It'd be far to door set. Yeah, so that's it's this part of it. Is when we they've, they've, they will get, that'll be an extension. Uh, it comes on the extension. Um, Windows were installed before 15th of June, but yearly inspection came after 15th of June. Can I use the site? Uh, there's a store before 15th of June. Yeah. yeah, so if the windows were installed on the 14th of June, they will be installed under those regulations. As long as we can identify that that's when it was installed, we would be assessing to the previous uh, previous um, uh, regulations. We wouldn't be. Uh, applying the new regulations to stuff that is installed before the uh, before the 15th of June. Okay. Um, yeah, I understand some don't quite reach the value, um, but unfortunately uh, that's the nature of the beast. We the, the regs are that from the 15th of June they need to comply. Um, so all I can all I can suggest is talk to directly to the BFRC. Okay, I'm gonna move now to the QA. Um, so I'm gonna we'll close down the chat now. I'm nearly finished. Uh, hello, I think it's I'm sorry, I thought it was just about document F. Sorry, <laughs> no, just just L. Um, um, manufacturers use trickle vents with 2500 equivalent area, which provides 4000 free area. I don't plan on providing anything different. So, this fall under what is feasible, as I don't provide many bigger. Obviously, we'll just put in as many as possible to meet the criteria. They can use whatever size they want as long as you meet the criteria in the room. So, trickle vent isn't based on window, it's based on room. The requirement it's not based on the size of the room just the room um so uh, a habitable room needs eight thousand millimeters uh equivalent area um and a bathroom or toilet needs four thousand millimeters equivalent area um so if if they're only putting two and a half thousand in and there's plenty of space to fit a four thousand in it'll get failed so that they they need to get the, the right amount. So you need to require the, the correct amount because you're the installer and you're going to do the survey and you're going to say this is this room and I need this amount. Um, if if they're only putting in two and a half thousands and they're going oh well we're not going to we're not going to put a four thousand in we're not going to retool or, or buy the bigger covers um, and we come along and there's plenty of space to fit a bigger type of cover in we'll fail it and say you need to put more ventilation in. And what we've said for quite some time now is. Um, it's easier to put the vents in in a factory than it is to stand there and try and route or drill them out. And being from the installation side of the business myself and having to do that, it's no fun. So yeah, get it right the first time is the best option. Um, we will accept joinery soft U value for Timberwind. Yes, absolutely. Joinery soft U value for Timberwind is using BDF. We've used it for years. 
Um, so that's absolutely fine, not a problem there. Uh, yeah, are you saying the character properties for replacement timber windows can still use 1.2 U value to include conservation properties? Uh, so yeah, you need to talk to the local environment officer or the council to see what they require. Some of them will require it to look exact, you know, in a certain way, and you'll need to get a certain unit in there. Um, others will go, no, you can you can put what you want in, that's fine. So you can use a 1.2 if required, but you'll need to talk to the, the local authority will be the best option. Um, we are coming to the end. I'm going to try and do one more and then I'll be closing this off and say uh, this is uh, first we will be doing another one or two of these uh, down the line. I hope you're finding them useful. Last one from Matt, uh, Mark Parker. Uh, do these regs apply to external enclosed porches? Now, porches outside the, the remit. The only reg that actually applies to porches is uh, K in England and in Wales, safe class. Okay. Uh, however, if you if they they're opened up, if you take the door out, it's basically like a conservatory. Uh, then they'll need to comply with everything. So if you take the the the, the, the if you break the thermal break between a house and porch, you'll need to uh, you will need to uh, make them meet the regs. But if it's enclosed, if it's a if it's an external porch, no. If you've got the the door behind it is the one that, that needs to comply. So if you change that door, that needs to meet the regs. Okay, I'm going to have to uh, to stop this now. I hope you found it useful. If you've got any other queries, please email them through to Fencer. We'll be doing another one of these, uh, hopefully in a week or two. Um, and uh, yeah, if we will, any questions that have come up through here, we will feed back into the system. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>